You can stack anywhere from 8KWH all the way up to 28KWH. And there's terminals that connect each one together so there's no wiring required. Really streamlines the install. They don't really have to modify inside the house wiring. They can kind of do it all outside and just, just feed into the main panel. One of the things that's really unique about our system is you have the AC coupling and you can also DC couple at the same time because of our hybrid inverter and the way that it works. You will see us be getting a little bit more aggressive with pricing to help combat the ITC that was taken away from the, the consumers. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming back to you from RE Plus, the large international solar conference here in Las Vegas. This morning I'm joined by Kyle DeYoung from Fox Hi. ESS, How's it going? and we're looking at the Fox ESS PowerQ all-in-one solar storage and load control system. So, Kyle, really good to see you again. Good to see you again as well. Hey, thanks for taking time to chat with us. Absolutely, so, thank you. Um, as you know, competition is really heating up in this space. Yes. Uh, and of course, here in the U.S., pretty much everything is going to solar with battery storage. You know, a couple years ago, it was, it was not uncommon to just install solar panels only, feed it into your meter move on to the next house, but now pretty much everything in the States is going towards solar with battery storage, in many cases with a whole home backup as well. Now, now, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, Fox ESS is one of those companies that's been really crushing it internationally, uh, especially in markets like in Europe, the UK, Germany, Australia, and now they're coming into the US market with their all-in-one solar storage and load control solution. Yeah. So for Kyle, for those that aren't familiar with the PowerQ product, can you kind of just walk us through the basics? How does the basic architecture work and the basic specs? Yeah, absolutely. So our PowerQ product is, is pretty nice. We typically run with an 11.4 inverter. You can do a 9.6 all the way down to a 3.8, but the 11.4 is kind of the most common. So what you have at the, on top, I'll go from top to bottom. You have an 11.4 hybrid inverter on top with the BMS built inside. So everything's controlled through here. So it's gonna be this portion here. Okay, and so then this is the inverter and BMS. So this is the inverter and the BMS. So this is gonna be your BMS portion here. Um, and it's really flexible with the way that how much you can stack. You can stack anywhere from 8 kWh all the way up to 28 kWh if it's off grid, if it's in a home, something like that. You can only go up to 20 kilowatt hours just because of the fact that you know there's fire code. Um, but each one of these modules here are going to be four kilowatt hours. So essentially, you just unwrap it, you you unpack it, you stack the base up, and there's terminals that connect each one together, so there's no wiring required and there's screws on the side that you just have to do to kind of connect them all together. It can bolt to the ground, it can lag to the wall to make sure it doesn't tip or fall over and get damaged. So this is kind of like the, the all-in-one solution. Uh, a big difference is you have the 11.4 inverter that can actually output 11.4. You're gonna have 160 LRA with it, but you can also uh, charge the batteries at 11.4 as well. So you can have the up and down speed, which kind of is really nice on cloudy days and you know, where you only have limited sun, it's gonna charge your batteries a lot faster so you have that full battery for the rest of the night. All right, yeah. so 11.4 kilowatt output on the inverter. Uh, each module you said is, is four kilowatt hours? Yes. So this is what we have depicted here. This total stack would be 20 kilowatt hours? Correct, this is gonna be a 20 kilowatt hour stack. That's also a 20 kilowatt hour stack, which is kind of what I have in my house. I have a 40 kilowatt hour stack at my home. Okay. Um, but you can also, when you're, when you're stacking these together, you can do up to four in parallel to one hub, so essentially you can go up to 80 kilowatt hours uh, if you're on grid, or you can go even like 112 if you're off grid or, or outside, depending on the, their situation or where your AHJ is, they, okay. it can change, but stack four of them together to one hub on a 200 amp service, so. Makes sense, makes sense, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I guess in theory, you could do a whole house on a single single inverter, single stack, of course, you'd have to you'd have to really be careful about evening consumption with with that 20 kilowatt hour storage limit. Correct. You know, if you're talking about a backup situation, but in, you know, I think in many cases for larger homes, especially a two a two inverter multi battery stack. Now, does the, does the hub facilitate the parallel connection of the two units? It does not. So what you do is you're going to have to combine these into a combiner panel. Combiner, okay. Basically, like 60 amps per okay. one, per one, and yep. then uh, however big you need it for however many stacks you have and then that goes into the hub because there's a separate spot in the hub for if you parallel compared to if you just put a single inverter in there. Okay. So it, it actually goes into the lugs of the backup loads uh, rather than going to a designated breaker spot. Otherwise, you don't need anything if it's just one stack. This can go straight into the hub from there. Unless you're having more, then you'll have to definitely put a combiner box panel that, that, that takes care of it there. So that's, yeah, essentially you're gonna need to have something just to combine it, just like any, anything combiner, else. Yeah, parallel, combiner, yeah, combiner, yeah. All right, uh, we'll, we'll uh, dig into the hub a little bit more later. I'm gonna have some questions about that. Now, I also noticed for the first time the meter collar adapter. 
from EQB, and I think a lot of a lot of manufacturers are going towards this doing the grid interconnection right at the meter collar adapter. Can you tell us a little bit about how the, the Fox ESS system ties in with the, EQ, uh, the EQB meter base? Yeah, absolutely. So we have EQB, we're also working with Connect DR, we're gonna kind of keep our options open, but essentially our system's gonna come into here, it's gonna go into our meter collar hub, which then makes it, I guess, convertible to the, to the meter collar, right? So once it goes from here to the hub and then it goes to the meter collar, then that's where you're gonna give it your, basically your, your backup switch solution to you're not where you're going to have to have your whole home backup, but you're not going to have to use the hub or anything else or anything like that. The only downfall to that, I mean, there's upside and downside. Like the downside is you're not going to have smart circuits. You're not going to be able to have to do stuff like that, like you do with that one or generator input and stuff. But with this one, it's going to be a lot less time to install and cost a lot less. But you just want to make sure you have the battery capacity to back it up, so that way maybe you don't have to do any load shedding. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. But I think that, that is the trade-off. I know a lot of installers like this method of interconnection because it, it really streamlines the install. Correct. They don't really have to modify inside the house wiring. They can kind of do it all outside and just, just feed into the main panel right. with your solar output. All right, now let's say if you do want to do the full solution with the hub then, what additional capabilities do you get here with the hub? So with the hub, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. Um, with the hub, you have three smart circuits up top. So you'll have a, one double pull and two single pulls that you can go up to 80 amps on. Okay. So you can use those to load shed for state of charge um, or if you're off grid or however you want to use that to make sure you maintain your battery to a certain, uh, if it gets down to 50% or whatever we want to set it at, you can kick off your high loads, your full pump, your AC or whatever it is, just to make your battery last that much longer. Keeps it automatic and kind of seamless process to, to, to reserve your battery. And then you also have your AC coupling here and you also have your D, your, this is gonna be where your DC couple goes if you're doing one battery, right? So it's gonna, that's gonna be your Fox inverter there. One of the things that's really unique about our system is you have the AC coupling and you can also DC couple at the same time because of our hybrid inverter and the way that it works. So up here you can AC couple up to 80 amps and then if you have an old system that you wanna add on and the customer wants to add panels and you don't wanna to have to match old systems with new systems and try to figure out how to find the parts, you can actually DC couple the rest of the added system onto this and then plug it straight in. So you have. So we, we can bring high voltage DC straight to the inverter here. Correct. But if you have an existing solar, we can AC couple. So you don't like, let's say we have a micro inverter system on yes. the roof. We can take the AC output of the micro inverter system, land it here. Correct. But if we want more solar, we can direct DC couple it right, right to the, uh, the inverter. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. so we've had that happen a few times. It makes it way easier for the installer to be able to find the materials and not have to hunt for older materials that may not exist anymore. Of course. Right. Now, so, what, what, what are the limits as far as how much how much solar input on the DC side, how much solar input on the AC side? So it's going to be 550 per MPPT times four, so you can go up to like four strings. So 550 volts max? 550 volts max per okay. string. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to have 80 amps max on the AC coupling. On the AC coupling. Correct. Okay, so pretty good capacity then. That's on a single inverter. Yeah, and then one cool thing to note is that with this, we have a Frequency that uh, frequ it changes the frequency. So when you actually do lose power, the microgrid system, no matter which microgrid system it, it is, it will stay. Will actually stay on and produce depending on what the demand of the battery in the home is. Uh, so there's some other systems out there that may not be able to do that, but with the frequency changing uh, relay that's in there, it allows you to go ahead and do that. Okay, so quick teaching moment here. So ba basically, what what Kyle's talking about is. If you have the system set up where you have AC coupled, let's say to an old older solar system on the home, and you have DC coupled direct into the Fox inverter, let's say the grid goes down, typically your, your AC coupled solar is gonna shut down. It's gonna say that the grid signal's gone, you know, grid's unstable, we gotta shut down. What I'm hearing from you, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that you'll send a frequency out on the AC circuit, and it will essentially trick, it'll trick the micro inverters or the, the grid tie inverter to think that, that this is the grid. And it'll show that a, a healthy frequency there, which will cause those micro inverters or, or grid tie inverter to wake up and be able to contribute power in, even Correct. when you're running in an off-grid mode. So you can still charge from AC and, and for, direct from DC. Correct, yes. That's one of the great functions that we do have. Uh, we also have a built-in generator ATS as well. So you have two 200 amp pass-throughs, the 200 amp pass-through for the grid, one for the generator. And okay. it's, a, it's a seamless backup, right? So um, it's just a two wire line. So when that, when that generator relay is activated, is that able to power the house and recharge the batteries yes. at the same time? Correct, yeah. So you can power the house, recharge the batteries, and um, also when, you know, when the sun comes up, you know, your solar will kick on, feed it off, and then once it figures out you're at a certain threshold, then it'll, it'll cut the generator off and then go back to solar 
or batteries and whatever else it needs. So, so that way your generator's not running the whole time when you're out of yep, power. Yep, no, that's great. Yeah, and again, for, for those of you who are, who are planning to run in like a true off-grid environment or you know setting your house up to survive a prolonged grid outage, I always recommend having that generator recharge option so that if you are running off-grid, you hit a patch of bad weather, maybe the solar panels aren't able to recharge the battery fast enough, you have an option, just fire up the generator for a few hours, let the generator power the house and recharge the batteries back full, and then you can go back to running off solar and battery power, so it'll stretch your fuel supply. Right. And you don't have to run the generator overnight. You know, exactly. You're running it for a couple hours during the daytime, you can run silent on battery power at nighttime and really stretch that fuel supply. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the other main thing about our system that's unique is you can actually use this as a main service panel. So there's actually a bonding jumper in here to where if you do need to upgrade the uh, service, like let's say sometimes with the HJs, you're the, you have to do a, a main panel upgrade because it's just not gonna work for what you're using. Instead of doing a main panel upgrade and you're able to debond the internal panel and actually use a CSR 2200 or whatever, however many amps you need for here to use this as the main service panel. So you have that option and flexibility to not have to do a full MPU on the home, which saves a lot of time and money. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, Kyle, is there anything else that the audience should know about the Fox ESS PowerQ solution? Yeah, so with, with our system, we do have the heating capability as well built in to where you can go down to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit and have it still be operational and functioning. Most systems typically go down to negative four, but we try to give it that extra little bit of juice to be more efficient, going down to negative 13. So if you're going to colder environments, it's gonna be really, it's gonna work really well, especially with a NEMA 4X rating. You can actually install it outside and not have to worry about uh, any issues or damaging the battery with rain and, and salt water and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Well, a million dollar question, I'm sure a lot of folks out there are wondering is how, how much does it cost? Or if you can't give us a specific pricing, compared to some of the other solutions on the, the market, wh where do you guys fall in the price range? Yeah, so as far as price range, I mean, for the same for the same uh, system with this, uh, you're looking at, I guess if you want to compare it to another system, you're looking at the same cost as like a Powerwall 3. You can okay. compare it to a Powerwall 3, but you're going to get 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage rather than just uh, 13 and a half. And you'll have more output. So the unique thing about our system is that we can actually charge our batteries at 11.4. So if you have those limited peak hours of sun like you were talking about during certain days, it can charge it up real fast to compare to competitors with, that can only uh, charge at like, let's say 5kW or 8kW. And if you if you're don't have a lot of load on your house, a lot of that gets wasted. So instead of wasting it, we want to make sure we focus on filling the battery up as fast as possible for those low light situations. Makes a lot of sense, makes a lot of sense. And just jumping back to pricing for a second, folks, this is why I've been saying, what you really want to look at is what is the total cost per kilowatt hour of capacity in your system. It's not, it's not just what's the price of the battery or what's the price of the inverter. It's you look at the, the price of the total solution, divide it by the, the number of kilowatt hours of storage capacity that you're getting with that solution. That's going to give you a much better way to compare pricing apples to apples. Yeah, absolutely, because people will compare, uh, they'll say, hey, a, a, a Tesla is the same price as a Franklin or, or vice versa, or Franklin's a little more. But you really have to look at, like you said, What's the capacity of the, of the battery? How much is it gonna provide? And what's the output of the battery? What's it capable of? What are the functions that you get with it? As far as, do you have load shedding? Do you have on-grid, off-grid capabilities? And AC coupling uh, options and stuff like that. So you, there's a lot of things, like to your point, that are really important when looking at the overall system price. Absolutely. Well, as far as availability then, what can you share with us, Kyle? Is this, is this product available for sale now? And are you selling direct or are you selling through distribution? It is available now. We do have a, we do have a, quite a bit of it in stock here, ready to go in the states. So, I mean, if you're looking to get it, we have it at Green Tech. We have it at Sologent. Uh, we try to stick to our distribution partners just to maintain maintain that relationship. So, if anybody had any questions, they can feel free to reach out, and we can see what we can do for them to help make it work as well. So, Kyle, is there anything else that the audience should know about Fox ESS or the PowerQ solution? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of talk going about it around domestic content, and if you don't have domestic content, how's that going to work with loans, and what does that look like? So I think I think loans are really going to come come back in a big way, just as everything kind of balances out with electricity going up 20 to 30 percent in the Florida market over the next couple of years, and other markets obviously are also going to be raising the prices. You're going to have VPP programs and and other pro like state grant programs that are going to help out, but. At Fox, we are uh, dedicated to make it the most affordable product for the customer, but also providing the best quality we can. So, you know, coming up here in a little while, you will see us 
be getting a little bit more aggressive with pricing to help combat the ITC regu- that was taken away from the, the consumers. So that's one way that kind of we're going to kind of address the market to make it more affordable for the homeowner and the installer to make it to where everybody can still uh, get what they need as far as like BSS backup solutions and inverters. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that's really what we need to look at as, a, as, a, as an industry here is how can we knock, you know, 20 or 30 percent off the cost of that? If we can do it by, you know, getting better, better financing options, no, no fees. Right. Uh, if we can do it by doing more efficient installations, uh, of course, we're going to have to take a look at a hard look at the issue of, you know, you know, managing some of these excessive sales commissions. But whatever savings we can get on the equipment side is a tremendous help as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we're going to focus on really heavily moving forward, just to make sure we can make that work for the customer. Uh, and, and to your point, you know, with a faster install, you guys aren't at the job site as long. You're going to save money that way. So we're, we're trying to make it even faster by making little changes uh, to the system. Uh, I don't want to say them yet, but we are we are in the works of trying to make little changes to make it that much faster and that much easier for the customer and the installer. Great, yeah. great. Well, folks, this has been a chat with Kyle DeYoung. We're, we're looking at the Fox ESS all-in-one power queue solution. Uh, Kyle, thanks for taking some more yeah. time to chat with our audience nice today. Uh, and thank it. you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. Uh, but that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.